Question 1. One of the main causes of nephrotic syndrome is a post-streptococcal infection. A. True. B. False. Correct answer is B. False. Question 2. In patients who are experiencing acute glomerulonephrites, the glomerulus is permeable to what substances? A. Red blood cells and protein. B. Protein and white blood cells. C. Red blood cells, protein, and lipids. D. Proteins. Correct answer is A. Red blood cells and protein. Rationale. In glomerulonephrites, the glomerulus is permeable to solid substances, such as protein and red blood cells, than liquid substances, and leads to blood in their urine, which is termed as hematuria, protein in their urine, which is termed as proteinuria, and a scanty urine production, because they are allowing solid substances to be filtered instead of fluid, called oliguria. Question 3. Which of the following conditions most commonly causes acute glomerulonephrites? A. A congenital condition leading to renal dysfunction. B. Prior infection with group A streptococcus within the past 10 to 14 days. C. Viral infection of the glomeruli. D. Nephrotic syndrome. Correct answer is B. Prior infection with group A streptococcus within the past 10 to 14 days. Rationale Acute glomerulonephrites is most commonly caused by the immune response to a prior upper respiratory infection with group A streptococcus. Question 4. Nurse Kai is evaluating a female child with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephrites for signs of improvement. Which finding typically is the earliest sign of improvement? A. Increased urine output. B. Increased appetite. C. Increased energy level. D. Decreased diarrheal. Correct answer is A. Increased urine output. Rationale Increased urine output, a sign of improving kidney function, typically is the first sign that a child with acute post streptococcal glomerulonephrites, APSGN, is improving. Question 5 Nurse Ento is evaluating a client's fluid intake and output record. Fluid intake and urine output should relate in which way? A. Fluid intake should be double the urine output. B. Fluid intake should be approximately equal to the urine output. C. Fluid intake should be half the urine output. D. Fluid intake should be inversely proportional to the urine output. Correct answer is B. Fluid intake should be approximately equal to the urine output. Rationale Normally, fluid intake is approximately equal to the urine output. Any other relationship signals an abnormality. Question 6. When educating parents regarding known antecedent infections in acute glomerulonephrites, which of the following should the nurse cover? A. Scabies B. Impetigo C. Herpes simplex D. Varicella Correct answer is B. Impetigo Rationale Impetigo, a bacterial infection of the skin, may be caused by streptococci and may precede acute glomerulonephrites. Although most streptococcal infections do not cause acute glomerulonephrites, when they do, 
a latent period of 10 to 14 days occur between the infection, usually of the skin, impetigo, or upper respiratory tract, and the onset of clinical manifestations. Question 7. An 18 years old student is admitted with dark urine, fever, and flank pain, and is diagnosed with acute glomerulonephrites. Which would most likely be in this student's health history? A. Renal calculi. B. Renal trauma. C. Recent sore throat. D. Family history of acute glomerulonephrites. Correct answer is C. Recent sore throat. Rationale. The most common form of acute glomerulonephrites is caused by group of beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Question 8. Clinical manifestations of acute glomerulonephrites include which of the following? A. Chills and flank pain. B oliguria and generalized edema c hematuria and proteinuria d dysuria and hypertension correct answer is c hematuria and proteinuria rationale hematuria and proteinuria indicate acute glomerulonephrites these findings result from increased permeability of the glomerular membrane due to the antigen-antibody reaction. Generalized edema is seen most often in nephrosis. Question 9. Which finding leads you to suspect acute glomerulonephrites in your 32 years old? Patient. A. Dysuria, frequency and urgency. B back pain, nausea, and vomiting. C. Hypertension, oliguria, and fatigue. D. Fever, chills, and right upper quadrant pain radiating to the back. Correct answer is C. Hypertension, oliguria, and fatigue. Rationale hypertension, oliguria, and fatigue. Mild to moderate HTN may result from sodium or water retention and inappropriate renin release from the kidneys. Oliguria and fatigue also may be seen. Other signs are proteinuria and azotemia. Question 10. The nurse assessing a child with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephrites should be alert for which finding? A. Increased urine output. B. Hypertension. C. T-colored urine. D. Weight gain. Correct answer is C. T-colored urine. Rationale. Acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephrites is characterized by hematuria, proteinuria, edema, and renal insufficiency. T-colored urine is an indication of hematuria. Question 11. The mother of a child who was recently diagnosed with acute glomerulonephrites asks the nurse why the physician keeps talking about casts in the urine. The nurse's response is based on the knowledge that the presence of casts in the urine indicates a. Glomerular injury b. Glomerular healing c. Recent streptococcal infection d. Excessive amounts of protein in the urine Correct answer is a. Glomerular injury Rationale. The presence of red blood cell casts in the urine indicates glomerular injury. Casts in the urine are abnormal findings and are indicative of glomerular injury. Question 12. Which of the following symptoms do you expect to see in a patient diagnosed with acute pyelonephritis? A. 
jaundice and flank pain. B. Costa vertebral angle tenderness and chills. C. Burning sensation on urination. D. Polyuria and nocturia. Correct answer is B. Costa vertebral angle tenderness and chills. Rationale Costa vertebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Acute pyelonephritis is a bacterial infection causing inflammation of the kidneys. Pyelonephritis occurs as a complication of an ascending urinary tract infection which spreads from the bladder to the kidneys. Symptoms usually include fever, flank pain, nausea, vomiting, burning with urination, increased frequency, and urgency. Question 13. You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection, UTI. Which statement by the patient suggests that a UTI is likely? A. I pee a lot. B. It burns when I pee. C. I go hours without the urge to pee. D. My pee smells sweet. Correct answer is B. It burns when I pee. Rationale A common symptom of a UTI is dysuria. A patient with a UTI often reports frequent voiding of small amounts and the urgency to void. Symptoms of uncomplicated UTI are pain on urination, dysuria, frequent urination, frequency, inability to start the urine stream, hesitation, sudden onset of the need to urinate, urgency, and blood in the urine, hematuria. Question 14. Which instructions do you include in the teaching care plan for a patient with cystitis receiving phenazopyridine, pygidium? A. If the urine turns orange-red, call the doctor. B. Take phenazopyridine just before urination to relieve pain. C. Once painful urination is relieved, discontinue prescribed antibiotics. D. After painful urination is relieved, stop taking phenazopyridine. Correct answer is D. After painful urination is relieved, stop taking phenazopyridine. Rationale After painful urination is relieved, stop taking phenazopyridine. Pygidium is taken to relieve dysuria because it provides an analgesic and anesthetic effect on the urinary tract mucosa. The patient can stop taking it after the dysuria is relieved. Symptomatic treatment with analgesics may be used in patients who present with severe dysuria. Phenazopyridine is a urinary analgesic used in short-term treatment of urinary dysuria or discomfort. Question 15. Which patient is at greatest risk for developing a urinary tract infection, UTI? A. A 35 years old woman with a fractured wrist. B. A 20 years old woman with asthma. C. A 50 years old postmenopausal woman. D. A 28 years old with angina. Correct answer is C. A 50 years old postmenopausal woman. Rationale Women are more prone to UTIs after menopause due to reduced estrogen levels. Reduced estrogen levels lead to reduced levels of vaginal lactobacilli bacteria, which protect against infection. End of questions. Watch out! For more Alveoli e-learning exam series, subscribe, comment and like our videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you.